Anyers has denied any wrongdoing and says he looks forward to vindicating himself. Joining us now, Melanie Sloan, the first former Conyers staffer to speak on the record about the inappropriate behavior she says she witnessed while working with the congressman. Melanie, thank you for joining us. Uh, you have had quite a time on Capitol Hill working for others. And so you have a long history as a veteran on Capitol Hill. What did you experience with Representative Conyers? Well, initially when I went to work for the House Judiciary Committee, which, by the way, was a great honor and I was thrilled to be there, uh, it was a terrific job. I worked on crime policy. Uh, over time, my relationship with Mr. Conyers deteriorated as he became increasingly abusive to me. He would um, scream at me and berate me. And I know that I've, I've seen some tweets just saying, oh, well, you know, you're a snowflake. You, you can't have a, a tough boss. I can handle a tough boss. Uh, Congressman and now um, a minority leader, Chuck Schumer, was also my boss at one point. Mm -hmm. And he's a tough boss, but it's really not in the same, uh, nothing in the same ballpark. Uh, Conyers would berate me uh, horribly. And he once pulled me out of a meeting with domestic violence advocates, no less, and started screaming at me in the hallway. Uh, and uh, berating me, I believe, for, for not wearing stockings on some 100-degree Washington day. Um, there were other occasions where other things happened. I had organized a field hearing in New York City uh, on a, a crime policy matter, and then he brought his young child with him, and then he told me to leave the stage and go backstage and babysit the child for the entire period of the hearing that I'd organized. And then there was the other instance where I was called to go into his office, and he was walking around in his underwear. Yeah, that is the most recent one that I have read and one that is more consistent with the type of inappropriate behavior that has become the focal point right now uh, on some cases in Capitol Hill. There is part of your experience, though, that I want to ask you about, whether it was something that you had happened with you or that you knew about with other women, because now it's coming to light that there is a money trail that at least one person who is alleged uh, inappropriate behavior against Conyers was paid twenty seven thousand dollars basically to keep her mouth shut and to make the case go away. Right. Well, that, that's certainly quite common in settlement agreements, and not just with this woman, but settlement agreements for harassment or all sorts of uh, employment claims. Uh, quite generally, there is a settlement agreement and there's a non-disclosure agreement whereby the person who receives payment is not allowed to say anything. Uh, it's, of course, more troubling that this is the problem. Uh, how it's dealt with on Capitol Hill, given that this is taxpayer money, and then the voters don't have an opportunity to learn about a member's behavior when they next go to the ballot box. Did you speak out at the time when this was happening? I did, in fact, speak out at the time. I tried to speak to somebody. I, I, obviously, I spoke to my supervisor, who tried, I think, to talk to the congressman to no avail. Uh, at the time, uh, Dick Gephardt was the minority leader, and I spoke to one of his top staffers about the problem. I spoke to a, uh, somebody who worked at a major women's group and asked her to intercede on my behalf. And then eventually, I even talked to a reporter. Uh, but then that reporter went back and talked to another staff member for Conyers at the time, uh, trying to corroborate some of what I said. And that staff member, a woman, told him that I was mentally unstable. And so then he said, well, you're, if you're mentally unstable, I can't, I, can't go, I can't do anything with this story. And as you can imagine, all that was pretty disheartening. Um, and so eventually, I left. You know, uh, the, the, uh, the congressman has come forth with his own statement. You had 12 women who were former staffers of his who've come forth and supporting his, uh, his position on all of this, not just with you, but with other women who have allegations against him. Uh, what do you think needs to happen right now? Well, I think it's good that there's going to be an ethics committee investigation into Mr. Conyers' behavior. I have to say, I'm not overly optimistic. The House Ethics Committee has never been known for taking a tough stance for unethical conduct by any member of Congress. Uh, it's often just a black hole where allegations go to die and we never hear about them again. And that way, uh, other members of Congress can say, well, it's before the House Ethics Committee, so I can't talk about it. We'll wait for their, their review, and then they sort of never come up with a review. So I am a little concerned about that. I think it is good we're uh, talking about legislation that will have mandatory harassment training, but training is really not sufficient. I mean, there has to be repercussions for Do these you think members he should of leave? Congress. Do I think he should leave Congress? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I think it's uh, like so many Americans, I'm really on the fence about what should happen about all of these allegations. Uh, I, I definitely think there needs to be a process by which members of Congress are held accountable for their conduct, though. 
Wow. I mean, to hear what you're saying uh, about what happened with all of the reporting that you did contemporaneously, and then basically you were called mentally incapable. That's something that's been said about women making complaints for many, many decades at this point. Uh, Melanie Sloan, we appreciate you coming forth, one of the many women who have come forth against Representative Conyers today to tell your story. Thank you very Thank much you. for your time. President Trump right now is meeting with members of the Senate.